Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bar habati fillah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi Rizq al-tayb wa ilm al-taqabbil And forgive us of all of our many sins And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to meet the holy month of Ramadan And fast the holy month of Ramadan and have it accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with beneficial knowledge in this study of this treatise and forgive us of our many sins and our many, many shortcomings. Continue on in our study of the book Kitab Fil Iman by Imam Abi Ubaid Al Qasim ibn Salam Al Harawi Rahimahu wa ta'ala. We left off where the great Imam, one of our A'imma to Salaf, that he was speaking about and discussing the purpose of this treatise which was as a to clarify the aqidah of Ahl sunnah the i'tiqad of Ahl sunnah regarding Iman and to refute the creed with regards to uh, Iman that the murjiyah murjiyat al-fuqaha that the scholars of fiqh that had this deficiency in their creed, this akhta, this mistake, this serious mistake in creed regarding Iman, uh, to, he was writing in order to clarify the uh, the of Ahl Sunnah and to refute that false understanding by those great Imams. And as we mentioned prior to this, is that he also he did it with respect, and this is something that we can learn from. So I want you, for whoever is listening, whether it be one or two people, to please understand that when we refute people, it doesn't always have to be with harshness. And it should always be elmi. It should always be based on knowledge. It shouldn't be based on desires, which we see in many of our refutations, especially in the West. We even see this amongst the Arabs. Uh, and that sometimes it's based on desires. And it's based on, instead of correcting individuals and wanting them to, uh, it, uh, to, to, to rectify themselves, it is usually in order to debase them, humiliate them, and make them further from the sunnah. Because often the people say, hey, so-and-so is lost already and misguided and he's jahil, ajhal nas he's ahmaq, as some of the people say, wallahu musta'an. Where is their reputation, ilmi? Where is their following the salaf al-salih? that we see that yes, they use harsh ibarat sometimes when it was necessary. And at other times they were lean, were rough, they had mercy and gentleness in trying to call the mukhalif back to the sunnah of the Prophet So Imam Abu Bayd, he said, then when the people had returned to Islam and their desire for it became good and proper, Allah increased for them in their faith that they changed the prayer direction to the Kaaba, to the Kaaba, after they had been praying to Beit Al-Maqdis, saying, Verily we have seen the turning of your face towards the heaven. Surely we shall give you a Qibla that you are pleased with. So turn your face in the direction of the Holy Mosque, and whosoever you, you people are, turn your faces in prayer in that direction. Then he addressed them, when they were in Medina, by the uh, appellation of faith, that had previously been given them whenever he ordered them with something or forbade them from something. So he said while commanding, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fikid Abu Kareem, O you who believe, bow and prostrate. O you who believe, when you attend to offer prayer, wash your faces and your arms up to the elbows. He said while prohibiting, O you who believe, do not devour usury, double and multiply. O oh, you who believe, kill not game while you are in a state of ihram. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, as, as we mentioned, the Quran was revealed in stages. And in these verses that we see from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he revealed in stages, the prayer revealed in stages, the prohibitions revealed in stages, all of these things were in accordance with the status of the people and their level of iman. And it shows that Iman had a different uh, tarifat or, or, or uh, definitions
from the early advent of Islam and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and to the latter part of his messenger uh, of the, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivering the message so in Medina these uh, commands and prohibitions began to be revealed showing us what? that Iman began to take on more uh, uh, to include other uh, aspects or categories and that means amal that means deeds it wasn't simply the iman of before where it was just a call to tawheed and just fortifying the heart and and saying the kalima the, the kalima to tawheed the kalima to ikhlas on the tongue but rather now it was comprised of, uh, of a kalima uh, on the tongue as likewise the belief in the heart and the actions of the limbs. Uh, Imam uh, Abi Qasim, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatullah Abi Ubaid, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatullah Wasi, he said, so in every address that was directed to them after the hijra, containing a command or prohibition, he named them with this name, believers, due to their affirming the Shahada alone. Since at that time nothing else had been made obligatory for them. But afterwards, when the religious laws were revealed, these were made obligatory upon them in exactly the same way as the first obligation of testifying to the Shahada was. This because they were all from Allah sent by His command and obligation. So if they had refused to turn to the direction of the Kaaba in their prayer and stuck to that faith they had in the beginning of Islam, whose appellation they were ascribed to and they had stuck to the Qibla that they used to pray towards, then this would not have helped them at all and they would have violated their affirmation of the Shahada. This is because the first obedience was not more deserving of the appellation of faith than the second. So therefore, when they responded to Allah and His Messenger Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi and accepted the obligation of prayer just as they had responded by affirming the Shahada, then all of this would now be included in the appellation of faith due to the prayer being added to the affirmation. So again, now it became, Iman became a, uh, inclusive of Amal or A'mal. And the proof that the prayer is a part of the faith is the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah would never make your faith to be lost. Truly Allah is full of kindness, the most merciful towards mankind. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 143. This verse was revealed concerning some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, who turned towards the Qibla while they were praying in the direction of Bayt al-Maqdis. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about this, and then this verse was revealed. So what proof is needed after this to show that prayer is a part of faith? Because here, why is, uh, why is the great Imam, why does he keep emphasizing prayer is a part of faith? We know this. But obviously, the Murji of Fuqaha, he's using this as a hujja to refute their beliefs because they believe, as we mentioned in the first, that, that, that he mentioned in the beginning of the treaties, that they believe Imam or that uh, actions like the prayer were a part of taqwa and a part of bir, were a part of uh, uh, God fearfulness and piety. So they distinguish between that and iman. And Abu Sunnah says, La, this is all a part of iman. And taqwa is a part of iman. And bir is inclusive of iman. So this uh, shows that they had a difference and, and, uh, and the Imam is emphasizing this point to show that they've made a mistake that they shouldn't define those attributes of those actions as something other than faith because they are all part of faith so I think we get the point then the Imam uh, then he said and the proof that the prayers are part of faith is the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah would never make your faith to be lost. Truly Allah is full of kindness, the most merciful towards mankind. This verse was revealed concerning some of the companions. Okay, we mentioned that. So they remained like this for a period of time, and when they started going to prayer eagerly, and their hearts found it easy, Allah revealed the obligation of zakat in their faith in addition to what had preceded, saying, 
establish the prayer and give the zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al take sadaqah from their wealth in order to purify them and sanctify them with it. So all of these uh, are again showing that these are actions of Iman. And likewise that Iman was revealed in stages. And likewise Islam, which is inclusive of Iman, and sometimes they have the same meaning, is uh, inclusive of actions and inclusive uh, of Iman. It's all a part of Iman. Then he said, so if they affirm the Shahada with their tongues and establish the prayers, but they refuse to give the Zakat, then this would have effaced all that came before this obligation and would have violated their affirmation of the Shahada that had proceeded, just as their aversion to the prayer would have violated their affirmation that proceeded. And the testifier to the truth of this was the jihad that Abu Bakr who fought alongside or along with the Muhajirun and the Ansar against those Arabs that refused to pay the zakat, just as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam made jihad against the people of shirk. There is no difference between these two jihads with regards to shedding blood, taking children as captives, and taking the spoils of war, and all the Arabs did was to refuse to give zakat, not to reject its institutions. So here he's saying the fact that they refused uh, to actually do this and give the zakat to Abu Bakr, because he said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, had deceased sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, their, their blood was still made lawful and that this was still a part of denial of Iman and this was still as some you know this was still uh, a deny, denying of duties of Iman and which is a, a, a meaning that these are actions zakat is action then all of the laws of Islam became like this. Each time a law was revealed, it became joined to the laws that had preceded. And all of them were included under the appellation of faith, and those who followed them were named believers. <coughs> this is the place in which those who held that faith was merely saying error, and that when they heard a law calling them believers, they attributed complete faith to them. Likewise, and likewise they erred in their explanation of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he was asked as to what faith was to be, uh, what faith was, to which he replied that you believe in Allah. In their explanation of the hadith in which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by the one who had a believing slave girl about freeing her, so he ordered that she be free, be made free, and he called her a believer. These are to be taken to me, as I have explained to you. Their entering faith and their acceptance and belief in what has been revealed from it at that time. Very important. And indeed it was revealed in stages just as the Quran was revealed in stages. And the witness and evidence for what we say in the, is the book of Allah and the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so from the book of Allah is his saying and whenever there comes down a chapter of the Quran some of them, meaning the hypocrites, say which of you has had his faith increased by it? As for those who believe, it was it has increased their faith, and they rejoice. The believers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have in the believers are those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel a fear in their hearts. And when his verses are recited unto them, they increase their iman, or their faith, and they put their trust in their Lord. What do these verses illustrate for us? Which also is a... Uh, a ref refutation of the murjia is that our iman increases and decreases. Iman fluctuates. That iman is not constant and stable. So the murjia say, for example, because this has implications. This has big implications, and I believe he mentions this in the treaties. That it's not simply a matter of just mustalahat or or terminologies. Because when you hold the belief of the murjia, then they believe that faith is constant. There's no fluctuation in faith. So the one who drinks alcohol and, and commits zina daily, or homosexuality, or any other sins, which are uh, foul sins, major sins, for them is a complete believer. The Murjiya believe they're a complete believer. Because all they have to do is, of course we can't judge what's, uh, we can't make the full, the judgment on the heart, but the fact that they testified faith, they're believers. So you're either a full believer 
or you're not a believer. That's what the Murjia believe. And this is similar, although it's similar to the Khawarij, that they believe you either have complete Iman or you have no Iman at all. It's the same. Only the Khawarij make takfir of those major sins, so they are the wa'idiyah, they, uh, you know, uh, emphasize the verses of punishment. And the murjia, on the opposite scale, they emphasize the verses and a hadith of mercy. But Ahlul Sunnah is in the middle, and they take all of those verses and put them in their right, rightful context, really realizing that Iman is made up of those three components, a, a statement of the tongue, testimony of faith, the actions of the heart, and actions of the limbs. And that Iman increases and decreases. And for and this ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, the believers are those who when Allah is mentioned, feel a fear in their hearts, and when his verses are recited unto them, they increase their faith. So these are the real mu'mineen. Those are the uh, mu'min kamil. So some of us, we're believers, but we're not on that level. We're weaker. We hear the Quran, we talk, we don't, we may not pay attention to it, or it just doesn't really affect our heart like it should. But the mu'min kamil, the full believer, is affected by that. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, was that of whom iman you know, uh, that they increase their faith. So they hear the ayat, they hear the Quran, and it increases their iman, because they know, they think about the meaning, they reflect on the meaning, they reflect upon their shortcomings, they reflect upon what they want, which is Jannah. They reflect on the fact that the, their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala lives, uh, their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala lives, and that they, they want to meet him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And they are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kareem, after Audi Bila Bishetan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Valik al Kitab al Araba Fi, Hudden al Mutakim, Aladin Yukminun Bil Ray, Wuyukimun Salat, Women Marazakanahum Yukfakun. Those are some of the Sifat of the believers. And the Shahid, the point I wanted to mention with that ayah is that Ahli Iman, that they Wuyukminun Bil Ray, they believe in the light, they believe in the the unseen. They, I've never seen the, the angels. You've never seen the angels. Most of us have not seen the angels. Now, some people claim to have seen angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And people claim to, you know, uh, definitely people have seen jinn. But all of these, the shahid is that all of these are part of the world of the unseen. We don't know, you know, who's in this, perhaps in this room, in this gathering, the malaika. We know the malaika are witnessing what, what is being said here. And we hope that Allah makes this as a reward, even though this is not a direct gathering of Elm. You're not in the same, we're not here together. But be in Allah, hopefully, on our niyyah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us reward and forgive us of our sins and forgive you and guide you and bless you and give you reward for listening to dhikr. If you sought to, to, to do this dars, to seek knowledge for the sake of Allah, to come closer to Him, to better practice and understand His religion then bi'idn Allah you will receive reward as well. It's not like the same, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, as being in a, a direct gathering of dhikr. This is why the best way to seek talib al-ilm is to do talib al-ilm, is to be in the gather, gathering of the ulama, and be in the masajid, be in those places, in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah wa ta'ala's speech is being remembered, and it's on the tongue of the people, and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is being, uh, uh, mentioned and studied those are the best gatherings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be in those gatherings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafir as tayyib wa al mutaqabilin anything I said that was correct was from Allah azza wa jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam